welcome into the ArcGem Sports Business Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we're going to look briefly at the different owners of the three major bike races in cycling. So these are the three grand tours. So for those that don't know, the race calendar is effectively made up of, in, in top-level cycling, the race calendar is made up of three nearly month-long tours, um, you know, 20, 22-plus days. Uh, the Tour de France, which many people have heard of, that's the biggest granddaddy of them all, the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta a España. Those are the three bike races, basically the Tour of France, the Tour of Italy, the Tour of Spain. There's some other smaller one-week races throughout the year, and then there's the big one-day races, Pierre roubaix Tour of Flanders, Milan-San Remo, things like that. So those make up the season. Basically, you've got some one-day races, some week-long races, and then kind of towards the end of the season, you've got in the summer, you've got these three uh, large tours. Now, who owns those tours? We talk a lot about ownership and league structure and things on this podcast. So let's just look very briefly at who owns the Tour, the Giro, and the Vuelta. All right. So there are basically two major owners. First, the ASO, Armory Sports Organization. They own the Tour de France. And in 2014, they purchased the Vuelta a España. So a little bit about ASO. ASO is a uh, French company. Uh, they're part of actually EPA, which is Editions Philip Armory. Philip Armory uh, was the founder and of, of this parent company and of the ASO. And his widow, Mary uh, Armory, still owns the majority of the company. So it's a very tight-knit, controlled French uh, company. They, the ASO also owns and organizes uh, the Paris Marathon, Dakar Rally, among, among other things, but those are kind of the main ones, the Tour de France, Vuelta a España, some other races throughout the year. Criterium de Dauphiné is another big race, but basically those races and then uh, the Paris Marathon and Dakar Rally are other events that people may have heard of. So now let's go to the Giro. The Giro is actually uh, organized by RCS Sports, RCS Sport, which is a uh, publicly traded Italian company. So you can go in and you can buy the stock of their uh, parent company and, and own a piece of the Giro. But here's kind of where the rub is. And this comes from the innerring.com, uh, which is a uh, very in-depth cycling blog. I encourage everyone to go check it out if you have interest further in, on these topics. There's a lot of deep dives on a lot of different topics. But anyway, from the inner ring, uh, there's actually a bit of nuance with the Giro. So RCS Sport puts on the Giro, organizes it, but they actually lease the rights from the original Italian family who gained control of the Giro in the late 20s. And that's the Bonacasa family. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not, uh, but they still actually own the Giro. And there's a Bonacasa trophy for, you know, a most aggressive rider, et cetera, throughout the Giro. That's their namesake. And the Countess, who is still around, she actually uh, does own the Giro and leases those rights to RCS to promote, organize the whole shebang. Uh, but she does show up to the Giro and is a presence. So both, so all three events, so both the Tour and the Giro are very much owned by old families in, in those countries. And the ASO, the French family, actually recently purchased the Vuelta. So they own that as well. So Vuelta, Tour, Giro. Again, very brief, just talking about the, the different organizations. And so because of that, you'll see some differences in the Giro, the way it's promoted, some of the TV deals, et cetera, than for the Tour and the Vuelta. But we can get into more of that in the future because today, this is all the time we've got. Thank you so much and have a great day.